a proper establishment of this thing will be the ultimate solution for all the predicaments in various levels of this society. We have taken this topic as leadership. It is very clearly meant that there will be a person who is going to lead others. And it is quite common and it is very simple. But being very simple in its terminology and its structure, in practical visibility and experience, the qualities that are required to get an effective leadership, giving perennial source of harmony, peace and prosperity divided in the society, that has become a daydream and myth, by which even it is known, even it is uh, <coughs> chattered between people, and even it is very much common in colloquial usage and debates, we are in a position to ponder upon these things with more cogitation, so that we can bring the real essence of the meaning for which it has been distinct to. Leadership means one has to lead the others, but to lead others, he must have knowledge without which he cannot lead. And apart from knowledge of things, he should have the magnanimity to lead others. At the time, he must be unalloyed in his status. And this should be very perpetual, cyclic. There should not produce any temporal gap or intermittence in the society. So considering these various difficulties in the practical experience of the benefits and fruits of the term as well as the attribute of leadership, we have started something to do with the presentations given by various people as per their exposure, erudition and experiences. And now to start with, leadership is nothing but the product of a spirit. Spirit is of two types, you know that soul is also called as a spirit. The energetic emanation of the consciousness of a person is also a spirit. He is a spirited person. And eschatology spirit means a departed spirit. Bhuta, Preta, innumerable persons are there. But spirit here contextually refers to an energetic emanation of the functional consciousness of a person. So, spirit is defined as the efficiency with which a person can perceive, conceive, analyze, plan, design, move and mobilize. Mobilize is a set of effective and definite series of actions. So, this is what we call leadership. Leadership is defined as the efficiency with which a person can perceive, conceive, analyze, plan, design, move by himself but also mobilize others. This type of definition has been given for spirit. And you know that this spirit is not available on people in equal proportions. There is somnolent people, there are vehement people, there are stagnant people, there are inner people, and there are insufficient people, and there are aberrant personalities. So, as the society faces disparity in the status and gravity of the so-called demanded spirit, that requires a commanding force, unifying force, eye-opener force to integrate everything for a common productive cause. That particular force is known as leadership. As the society is full of somnolent, ineffective, insufficient, aberrant, inert, and non-dynamic or misdirected forces, that required a super force to take care of everything, to tackle everything, to put everything in the proper orbit and axis. That is known as leadership. And leadership uh, that emanates from inherence, as well as it also takes care of urge. Inherence is the cradle of your person's awakened consciousness. That is inherent. But contextually or circumstantially, that comes as an urge when a person is either exposed to the society or when the society calls a person due to circumstantial demand and command. So, leadership comes out of inherence, it comes out of urge, and that urge is especially from a person's exposure to the circumstances or a strong demand from the circumstances. The structure of leadership is being diligent, confident, and vibrant. Diligent is ever energetic. Confident is it is above faith. It is above false hope. It is above speculation and imagination. A person who intellectually governs things and has a strong confidence which is coupled with the dynamism, that coupled with the dynamism, that effect is known as real confidence and that is practical and infallible. So such a person who is dynamic, having a confidential hope as well as an effective implementation methodology and also he should be vibrant. vibrant. He should be vibrant. That means he should be able to instill, inculcate, radiate and implant the same diligence and confidence in others. 
by his speech, by his touch, by his motion, by his practical way of open book source of life. So by his life, the speech, action and association, any person who is having the diligence, as well as the confidence which is translatable, transmittable to other people, which is having a salubrious, contagious nature, that nature is known as vibrant. So this is what we call leadership. And what is the purpose of leadership? Why we have to possess leadership? Without leadership, there will be three phases of abnormality. There are a lot of resources in the society in various forms. And there needs to be an integrity in the society. And society has different types of people with different levels of performance skills. So there is a social potential output. If there is no leadership, then there will be improportionate share of resources between the people. If there is no proper leadership, then organizational integrity among the society will be challenged and the social potential output will be disturbed and diluted if there is no proper direction of leadership. So, in order to integrate the society and its organization, in order to properly channelize the potential output of the society as well as for the proportionate distribution of the resources of the society, it requires a honest, salubrious, multipurposeful, dynamic, multidimensional leadership. Now the social output or the social system is not like that. We have different types of leaderships now. Number one, there is no leadership at all. Whatever we call as leadership, see as leadership, somebody proclaiming them as leaders or being very much designated as leaders, that is not leadership. So we have no leadership in various areas, Rajaka. And number two is we have number of leaders claiming that they are working for the same cause but disturbing others are also being disturbed in their unanimity within themselves. The third thing is we are having an inefficient puppet administrator or a puppet show administrator or we are having an enable or a person who is totally imbecile to have the qualities of leadership to be implemented for a social benefit. And fourth thing is we are having a malevolent person. The first thing is no proper leadership. Second is lot of leaders. The third thing is inefficient leader. Fourth is a malevolent leader. He is a potential person, but he is malevolent in nature. He may be either self-centric, he may be tyrant, or even go to the level of being antisocial. That is what we are seeing now. And also in leaderships, there is self-leadership. How to be a leader of our own conscience? The constitution or the frame, ethical frame of human mind is civilized mind is mature mind is conscience. Conscience scriptures, God himself and the mobile scripture in the form of seers and sages, these four things are the four pillars of ethics and morale of the society. We learn from scriptures, we learn from the life of great people, we learn from the revelation of God and we learn from the revelation of our own conscience. These four things are the four major pillars. So like that we should have something for self-organization. Second thing is group organization or group leadership. How to create groups if there is no such person who can govern everything, distribute everything in the form of groups and how to do that. The third thing is single unique relationship with a person who has all leadership qualities. It is very unimaginable. There are a lot of benevolent dictators, Samrat, we used to call Samrat, Sarva Bhoma, and it is impossible and not available also now. Such a person should have principles, principles governed with purity. Purity embellished with power and power endowed with the proper way of prudence so that he will not be corrupted by something or he will not corrupt something else. So this is known as prudence to safeguard a person's leadership qualities. So such a person who is a blended mixture of positivity, principles, purity, prudence and power, he is said to be a person who is a unique leader and who is a singular leader, a single person leading everything. This is what the system stands for. And we are having four major schools of thought in this. This is known as four types of behavior. You know that the primitive society, that is the Rangan Peterson model, in which they say that there is a matriarchal and patriarchal society, like the society of elephants and lions, in which there is natural inborn biological leadership. There is domination and there is subservience, which is nothing but it is gender oriented or it is a cell message or a genome message oriented which is natural and biological. So they just consider this subservience and domination as a common behavior. There are four behavior systems. One is common behavior. Second is a specific behavior. Third is a special behavior. Fourth thing is a silent behavior. Common behavior is a biological behavior. Second thing they call it a specific behavior. 
in advance of human beings who are the advanced species, rational species, social species, we have this type of organizing more than others, other species. That's what they call specific. Then even in human beings, due to the advent of civilization and its promotion, we used to develop a lot of leaderships, mutual share, checks and balances, group organization, collective survival. This they call as something special. What is salient? The salient behavior states that leadership springs from God. God has two qualities of leadership. Due to affection towards his devotees, he is led by his devotees. Due to his immanent power, infinite power, he leads everything. Likewise, you are all the parcels of God. We are all the scintillant sparks of the divine effulgence. So we used to call the same qualities within ourselves out of our inherence by which we surrender to great people and we are careful, we are very much concerned about our youngsters, about our immature, about the downtrodden and our dependents. We embrace them and we lead them. So being led and leading others, it is a, a bi-dimensional quality of God and each and everybody is a creation of God. Naturally, we reflect the same thing. It is known as divine grand theory which deals with salient behavior of leadership. So leadership is divine, leadership is divine representation, leadership is not only leading others, it is also being led by proper people, it is not only domination but also subservience which we will explain later. There are innumerable variations between leaders and leaderships. Leaders and leaderships in a pragmatic vision or in an analytical vision, they have no connection at all. The leadership, how it emanates? Whenever your person enters, there are two things. One is the trust, second is known as thrust. That which is coercively given is known as thrust. And that which is automatically, voluntarily submitted is known as trust. So whenever there is a submission from some people, it is based on few qualities. One is maturity, second thing is courage and sturdity. If somebody is mature, yes, please take care of this. So that is an entrustment. The second thing is maturity. In the form of advanced qualities, embedded with advanced qualities like courage and sturdity. If somebody is bold, yes, we are afraid, please take care of that. That is how we leadership. Entrustment due to maturity, due to courage and sturdity. Due to a person's resourceful nature, if a person is very rich and resourceful, he is interested about belongings. Then fourth, he is a skillful person who is capable of governing everything. So, skillful person, resourceful person, a courageous and sturdy person and a mature person, they have been given the qualities of leadership, they have been taken as leaders by means of trust. But now the society is different by means of which emergency and crisis it creates leaders. In the emergency, it, it creates some leaders. They become emergent leaders. Number one. And number two, the thirst for power that creates lot of leaders. By power thirst, lot of leaders are created. And in democratic society, selection on the basis of craze and sentiments. What is craze? A craze in media and sports that creates a very great response to a person and respect and reverence to a person. That is known as craze demand or craze selection. And sentimental selection due to language, religion, region, caste and other things. Now we have in leadership only on the basis of sentimental and craze selections. And other thing is opportunity. Opportunity that gives a lot of people. Why he has been a leader? Why not he? This time let him be a leader. So it is opportunity. They don't mind about the society and balance of governing the social abnormities. The final thing is very much obvious now, transparent now. It is bad is better than worse model or scarcity model. If something is bad, if something is worse, and if something is bad, that bad is better than worse. If a person is worst, then worse is better than being worse, worst. And if a person is worse, bad is better than being worse. So in a comparative model, he is better than him. Whether he is a proper leader or not, on the basis of thinking that bad is better than worse, or worse is better than worst, people are selected. And moreover, scarcity model, as nobody is available who can command upon some public attraction, or some public submission, or an integral demand from the society, or some favor. Some people they have been brought as there is scarcity for proper leadership by means of qualities based on principles and disciplines. So these things are the various models that we are facing now. 
and due to this type of models wrong people are in the proper place proper place proper places are filled by wrong people and proper people they are not properly placed because of lack of support and lack of presentation in society this is a present leadership and leadership it consists of also various divisions and ranges it is known it is known as ranges of leadership how far i can influence my influence with persons with the provinces how deep i can penetrate how long can create the impact with whom i can contact and create the impact so there is a range for leadership also and there are several models of leadership also there are six basic models we used to call in shastras number one he is a small or a, an inceptive leader who is known as eligibility oriented or eligibility builder these leaders of the society they cannot directly lead you but they can instill in you the qualities or the eligibilities to realize your own self they take you to a particular distance from where you have to proceed with somebody or by yourself so they are known as eligibility promoters those leaders they can teach you like your teachers tutors public speakers orators those people they can just awaken your hidden or sleeping consciousness give you some basic idea those people are known as eligibility promoters and second people they are known as specific organizers they cannot deal with things in multiverse scale but they can organize a particular thing specific thing very fantastically so the first people they are promoting a general awareness about leadership they are known as eligibility promoters the second level of leaders they are specific organizers those who can build a particular type of organization skill not everywhere not everywhere and the third type of thing is known as nuclear leadership from that nuclear powerful leadership great politicians great academicians great social animators great administrators great think tanks great scientists great uh, social civilians remarkably democratic and awakened vigilant committed citizens everybody emanate from the hub of a person who is known as a nuclear leader so eligibility promoter like us just we teach something to create some sort of awareness within you specific organizers they mold you in a particular direction a nuclear person or a leader he can create innumerable multi dimensional type of leaders from himself and also there is self organization i have already told that is known as internal leadership second type of people they are known as allurants those who are with them they can attract large large number of people with similar thoughts with similar activities they can bring large number of people and they can compositely make a hub they can compositely make an integral system they are known as allurants the third type of people they are ready to fight those who can organize with themselves they are known as internals those who can bring only the like minded people to a common platform they are known as allurants third are the people who are the challengers they can challenge any type of obstacle to them they can fight in the road and they can jump into the field and see that the eradicate the obstacles that are coming for the development of leadership qualities so we have large number of people for this type of leaderships in promotion of persons eligibility and alluring people of like minded like minded people are attracted in a common platform but why we are taking challenges by means of a judicial protest mass protest democratic protest at that time only challenges they can face so we have lot of leaders but challenging leaders or challenge facing leaders such type of robust leaders as well as persons who can have the nuclear capability of incubating producing multi integrating various dimensions of leadership in the society is yet to come or may be available hidden somewhere else in this madding world so this is what we call various divisions ranges of leadership that we have specified earlier there is education leaders separately management leadership is different religious is different communal leadership is there political leadership is there judicial administration is different science and technology each and everything they must know there is a common code of ethics and principles and purpose for the society and technical administration is different in each and everything so leadership is composite why this group leadership has not matured into a proper and productive turnover or consequence because of few reasons which i want to say simply number 1 each and everybody when everybody is given responsibility the natural psychological mechanism it creates pride dignity ego expectation clash and frictions so when each and everybody is untamed with the mind taming processes if they are just given power or if they are given a purpose if they are given a tool if they are given an opportunity to work without having proper table or trained mind such people will be a good reflector of this type of emotions like ego dignity pride and other things etc so those people they don't move with other people at all and the second thing is the executive ability executive possibility and impact of those people who are leaders now 
that is being diminished now that is diminishing now and the society is also different they don't have any obedience even if there are leaders we are talking about leaders if there are leaders how many people will be obedient to them how many people will be having some sort of perennial obedience or service to them so it denotes about lack of proper obedience and demanding their rights properly from leaders by means of taking care of their own rights and collective rights or social rights that is also there knowing the destinal duty in saying the leadership to be promoted and to be nourishing the society that is not there with the society also so society has this problems and these are the problems and like philosophy there are innumerable ways of life but philosophy very much deals with life after death liberation and other things but political and governing system they must be very transparent and unconfusing there are lot of people claiming the same thing it is known as assurance model and approach model in politics approach model is i want to approach the society's welfare through this hindutva through proletariat philosophy or communism through that is a promotion of social welfare through various things like that everybody is having a basic ideology which differs from other that is different but there are lot of things like women welfare child welfare infant mortality and uh, ecological environmental problem these things are very common everybody assure that they are going through the same thing everybody in political system they assure that they are going to accept some approaches most of the assurances of the society they are very common in spite of which there is a combat between lot of the people i used to tell you a story which i heard from a person or i saw somewhere else really one sadhu came to a house and he was just starving with hunger and uh, at that time the husband and wife they were very much fervent they are very much pious also they are pious to such an idiotic extent that they quarreled who has to serve that sadhu quarreling that they threw the vessels they threw the food and the sadhu was left to starving up to his death so like that everybody assuring the same doing something to the society showing some to the society giving assurance they quarrel between each other promoting themselves and showing the quarrels to that having a clandestine relation and network between all people within themselves and showing no result just managing exploiting and commercializing the weaker instincts and sentiments of the people that is the problem with the society so we have four things the society has four dimensional approaches to leadership how to mold the leadership we have to learn if leaders are there can they jump from the heaven the society has a responsibility to deal with the leaders so we know how to mold leaders number 1 and number 2 how to respond to leaders and number 3 how to recycle the leaders if the leadership is over how to recycle the process of leaders if leaders are doing their leadership activities how to watch them so it is to mold it is to respond it is to watch and it is to recycle that is with the society and how to mold the leaders by means of teaching training and selection selection is identity how to uh, identify a person who is a leader with all of these qualities or train a person like that or teach a person a person with qualities they must be taught about the social scenario a person having the seed of the quality must be intensively trained and then taught a person readily available must be identified selected and surrendered this is the way when the society is having three groups of people the first group of people is those who have some leadership qualities some negligible infinitesimal leadership qualities those who want leadership those who badly in need of leadership those who work for leadership so those who want those who have those who work and those who need this is the first area and we are having a considerable group of people in the society the second group of people is those who know about leadership just to be away from the society those who know everything but are busy with some other schedules and those who have no objective at all and those who have no objection in promoting leadership these people are in the second level third level is beneficiary circle of the abnormality the parasites which are growing obese by the abnormality and there are some beneficiaries if somebody is getting lakhs and crores somebody will get few pennies or rupees so this is known as beneficiary circle so this first group of people who is having wanting needing and working they have to integrate identify within themselves integrate and associate or awaken the people those who know those who are busy those who don't have any objective or objection they have to make a synergic evolution by which they have to take care of the beneficiary there is a model and to explain in this model is very easy and implementation is it will take some decade with the composite work on silence means i am not bothered because of fear because of its macroscopic nature and our microscopic nature we may be afraid that is fear and the second thing is negligence as you are busy with something else you neglect third thing is wonderful mutual silence i told it is known as a triple m model mutation for mutual mistakes 
you have done a mistake i won't be against you for that i have also committed a mistake you have to observe silence for that it is mutation for mutual mistake theory or model and this base is mutual silence is there this thing prevents vigilance of the people over the leaders so it is known as vigilance or watch the fourth thing is recycling if a person is having two things one is age and lineage these two things are the major obstructions in leadership age in people are governing it is an accusation it is governed by a lineage like solar and lunar dynasty this is also an accusation so there must be available lot of opportunities for people those who are young new energetic and suitable personalities and somebody asked uh, to appoint new people as it is young people or old people which is better then i answered it is a question of a person's maturity physical health or robust health and also his uh, intention to serve the people the qualities are neither the qualities of young or old we have seen lot of people old like uh, dr ns ramaswamy who can do lot of these things i have seen lot of people suffering with arthritis nephritis spondylitis those who are young within 30 and 35 so age is ethical but if you say health it is with both of the people both the facility as well as the problem maturity is also like that if a person crosses the age psychologically he is dismantled the person gets something with hysteria oblivion and various other errors it is common to old age if you consider that the growing old will also improve the status of excellence and performance that is also wrong so we need some people who is able who is mature who is mentally and physically healthy those who are the craving to serve the society both models are wrong because uh, they said that the youngsters will do something more and the old people they will be very slow so to crawl like the old people that model is also wrong to jump like the young model that is also wrong we have to have a uniform standard stable and shrewd motion that is suitable for the time and for the problem which may be between a crawl and jump that is what we call the new model so on the basis of these things somebody told how leaders will emerge the shastras they give lot of uh, philosophical backgrounds one is natural emergence every time when there is a crisis there will be emergence of leaders that is natural emergence psychological emergence when there is a pressure that pressure will liberate lot of your chains and chambers so that lot of leadership qualities will be promoted and they will be integrated later that is psychological sociological when there is a pressure over the mass of the society they will create something to create a leader from their own self and it will be automatically done ethical when ethics is trampled naturally the ethics will rise with more pressure philosophical when there is adharma and dharma in in proportion or something rules more than that naturally it will come that is philosophical solution religion when there is any problem due to abnormality or irreligiosity or immorality which has uh, taken its uh, challenges upon the morale of the society the code of conduct or principles of the society then god descends or sends somebody there is a religious model so everywhere there is a hope for leadership and we have also a connective relative distributive responsibility and liability in responding to the leadership molding the leader leadership watching the leadership if it is over we have to recycle the leadership because if there is a time gap that's what i told if there is indian war of independence that is over that small time gap has diluted the intense desire as well as patriots of most of the people they have been vexed and exhausted so time gap that automatically makes our tempo slow if tempo is made slow then immediately we result into a problem known as suction what is the problem known as suction the selected people will be diverted and the people those who are selected will be diluted that is known as suction they will go somewhere else so it is what we are seeing and experiencing now so these rules of emergence will come for rescue what we are going to do in this seminar what are all the models of approach to society i want to say few models one is the incentive model for everything like uh, domestic products and other multi purpose utility products they show some incentive so to attract people and to give them benefit you must see some incentive model and uh, second thing is connective benefit model in which they must have some connective benefit apart from incentive that must have a closer connectivity to their way of life the third thing is a triple f model what is triple f fashion fascination and fabrication model you have to design the same way in which i am saying i am not having any fashion or fascination so i am not suitable i think so somebody the same thing should be represented in a different shape and the same content should be represented in a different model and the presentation should be something attractive something sophisticated or ultra model so content presentation and the methodological presentation as well as the availability and resources and their external and internal designs they must be new 
so fashioning is giving the knowledge in a very adaptable dose and fascination is promoting it with people those who are very common and attractive in the society fabrication is multimedia presentation model presentation then uh, iconic presentation various other attractive methods would be there so we have to fashion the knowledge fascinate with new people and we have to fabricate the methodologies by means of some type of a shopping some type of multimedia technical presentation i have already told so who does it is known as fascination which is change that is known as fashion how it is presented and given in your hand that is known as fabrication that must have a proper root and proper proportion it should not be more than uh, a prescribed level due to which the content will be lost in a sugar coated medicine if the proportion of uh, the drug and the sugar base if it is ulta that is if it is reverse what will be the effect of the drug likewise there must be a recent uh, methodology of governing the proportion between these things it is known as triple f model fourth thing is self accumulated model first model is self accumulated you behave like that be like that so that you can inspire at least your proximate people and neighbors that is self accumulated model and the fifth thing is feasible access model you cannot change the world or iran or russia or armenia you change the people those who are surrendering to you or believers of you or dependents on you that is feasible access model then targeted concentration model you target on kids target on youngsters target on students target on downtrodden people target on people those who are about to be converted into anti social elements as a preventive methodology so it is known as targeted concentration where either they will become imbecile or they will become aggressive that as a preventive measure we have to target them it is known as targeted concentration model apart from that there is one wisdom vigilance model which is only for the learned people that is specially for learned people with analytical tabulations categorizations and various other prime of basic view solution it is a technical and logistic way of approach of the problems vigilance and wisdom model then wider and deeper access model deeper access model is training them under gurukula system wider access model is media presentation if it mixes in media with some brand ambassadors that is they are having for un and other things by that we can have a wider access as well as the deeper access these things are the various models but uh, we must start about something what is immediate mediate and ultimate we have to classify it. and also brief wide wider wider immediately we cannot think about russia or japan or something else global thinking is good but local operation is preferable safe and infallible so we have to start with that and if you want to do something at pakistan or Af afghanistan what we can do apart from praying for them what we can do in georgia and cuba what we can do there are some models one is com combined political decisions if there is combined political decision we can do second is a federal network if we have federal network everywhere we can do third thing is very interesting it is known as axe log model what is axe log the log of an axe is made out of the same wood if we have the same persons or same group of persons who belong to the same group of the sensational elements of the society if we have supporters also from the same side through them we can act or activate that is known as axe log model so by means of these special approaches we can approach lot of other people so these various models we have to think and each and every person presented here we have to write descriptively illustratively about all of these things now asking from you what is the time that you can dedicate monthly or weekly one hour two hour what is the time what is the resources money resources or writing or lecture or whatever it is third thing how you can be present how much you can be present fourth thing is active participation how long you can take how much you can take fifth is influence even if you can do along with you there are a lot of other connected networks how you can create a, a way for extending and expanding the network so time resources active presentation your presence and influence that we have to tabulate how much we can do for example i can attend five lectures i can give one lakh per month and like that we can decide something either money or matter or mind or might or courage whatever it may be any resource we can design now coming to the concluding session we are talking about indic leadership what is indic leadership and what do you mean by india there are four indias which india you call is it real india or surreal india ideal india or ideal india which india to mention there are lot of people in poverty illiteracy in fact mortality rate is more and malnutrition is more, more than uh, thousands of villages is suffering from malnutrition this is the real india and we are seeing promotion of lot of it industries yes is that a lot of foreign embassies are there mncs are establishing here multi story building these things are known as surreal india ideal india and what we have a scriptures few people crying calling and craving for the welfare of the society this is ideal india so it is what we define the india so which india you want we want to take the ideal india's principle 
and to promote the other sections of the community to reach uniformity, equality, prosperity and tranquility. That is the model which we are doing now. What are the messages given by India? There are three messages. Number one, India wealth management system, they are very wonderfully governed. They have given three models. One is Tyaga and second is Tripti, third is Dana. I don't want anything, I don't like anything. So you renounce Tyaga model. Yes, I want far my livelihood. Tripti, contentment model. Yes, you decide like that. I want to get more. I, I have the ability to earn more and prosper. Yes, dana. You you learn many things and you earn many things and establish yourself, provided that it's meant for distribution, for promotion, for collective social responsibility or collective social prosperity. Whether it is used for that or that you have to check out. So there is the Tyaga model for the total relief fishers. There is uh, the Tripti model for the persons who are in the peripheral of the zone entry of the world affairs and those who are very compassionate as well as capable as well as dynamic in wealth management and wealth acquisition technology they are meant for charity charity means uh, in a charity lecture i defend charity charity means whatever we think is giving something free of cost we define as charity not like that giving the person ability for his productivity and guiding him is real charity and giving some other thing free of cost is not charity. That charity is meant for immobile and imbecile people in the society. Those who have no hands or legs, those who have lost their lives. Huh? As an ultimate solution, it is given for the people. For the other people, developing country, real charity is giving them, providing them the ability to be more pr productive as well as to be well guided for their self sustenance and propelling nature. That is charity. And concession, loan, the loan cancellation, settlement, these are all gimmicks and some sort of eyewashes to the society for some other benefits. So they are not real benefits. And charity, one more charity is known as active charity. What is active or effective charity? Number one, make more produce. Number two, proper distribution. That is also charity. The third thing, consumer satisfaction. Fourth thing, no refusal of the demands of the initiators and workers. Those who are initiated and work for the cause, they must be given something which they deserve, which they demand. That is also charity. So charity, apart from all of these things, making more produce, making proper distribution, consumer should be satisfied and the person who has cultivated and processed, he must be also happy. And producing all of these things and providing all of these things to society is real charity. That is the, the charity required for an ever-growing, eternally green society. That which we have to make this model. Making other people sluggish and ever-dependent on charitable needs and institutions. That is a very great peril to the society. This is the first model. And second model, what are all the things that the leadership is made of and what we should be afraid of? Your leadership should have five qualities. Number one, he must be having a tune. A person who is attuned to the principles of morality, he is a good leader. Apart from which, he must be staunch for his principle. I am having my principle, stage number one. I am having my principle, I am seeing somebody different, behaving differently. Also, I am behaving in the same manner that is staunchness. In spite of seeing a different world, still I am maintaining my principles of precision. It is known as the second stage, what we call staunchness. Third thing, somebody is against me, opposing me. There also I am following the same thing, courage. The fourth stage, I have to lose something unavoidably. My wife, children, wealth or status, I am ready. That is sacrifice. The fifth thing is transformation ability by which a person, by his spiritual power, by his intellectual vigor, he must be able to tackle the problems and if possible, he must try to eliminate the opponents or at least transform them with his might. It is known as leadership model. And uh, what we should be afraid of, the punishment from law, the punishment of conscience, the punishment of God, the punishments of natural effective law, the law of natural effect, cause and effect. He must be afraid of this leadership model. Once we have to organize the seminar for three days about Eastern and Western comparative complete study of leadership models. We have trait theory, we have trait theory, there is a basic theory, then behavior and style theory is there, great men theory is there, and a uh, lot of theory, situation theory, contingency theory, functional theory, transactional theory, transformational theory, Napoleonic theory is there, aristocratic theory is there, meritocratic theory is there, ancient Roman theory is there, Confucian theory is there, the electric and the Leninistic comparative theory is there, proletariat theory is there. And we are having stewardship model and statesmanship model in the West. There are more than 86 theories of model which we have to compare with our own leadership and conduct a special seminar in a different occasion. Now, this is the model which has been given by our India. There is a question which everybody asks me. Everybody, Bible, Quran, everybody says that we have to be uh, loving everybody, 
then we have to patronize the people who are downtrodden, we have to help others. It is very common with everybody, number one. All religions are this thing in common, number one. Number two, even without religion, ethical treatises are available in civilized nations by which we can learn this love and other things, number two. Number three, even without ethical religion, normal observation with common sense in a mature society that can teach us to love others, to help others and everything. To love and help, mere observation is more than enough. And ethical treatises are an addition. And religious exercises are more burdens. Why we are placing that Indian religious practices? Somebody asked, then I told, helping others, loving others and various things are very easily possible to say. To practice that, we must have that courage. And we must have the power to fight against the opponent forces. For that, we have to develop a lot of practices. The practices are only specified in Vedas, not in other treatises. For example, if you want to tell truth, tell truth. Anybody can command any person. But to make the person to tell truth and to make the person to be invigilated inside so that he will not violate that principle and to fight against the untruthful elements and to resist untruth elements and to triumph in the end and to maintain the glory of his truthful nature, he needs courage and power. That's why the Shastra, they give four things. One is samskara, refinement. The person is refined by means of various rituals, mantras and various traditional observations. Samskara. Nishta, the person independently, he practices austerity and other things. Tapasya, deep meditation and inner purification is done by that person. That is known as Tapasya model. These things are very much given only in our Shastras. That is the greatness of our Shastra. Not only giving ideology, not only giving mere commands, but also giving the opportunities to learn, tame, preserve and safeguard those things inside and also to transmit to the other lineages. Those provisions are inculcated in our Shastras. Unless we practice these things, merely saying about Indic leadership or Indian tradition is totally ridiculous and useless because the principles have become common to the world, nothing exclusive to India, except the methodologies for gaining those powers. So we believe that now we have to start with number one, a yes, syllabus. As an exclusive subject, we have to make this. Number two, as an ancillary subject to some schools, we have made that. We have to conduct tours like this. Like we are having eco tours, health tours, project tours. We have to conduct tours for ethical vaccination and installation, which can be mixed with environment, wildlife, health tourism, seeing historical places, everything we can mix that. And the fourth thing is to conduct training classes by which people can be more invigorated with all of these principles. And uh, to say that, I request each and every person to make a project as well as an action plan for that so that I attended a lecture here at the same Indian International Center for the same leadership. At that time, a lot of things have been discussed. I was dissatisfied by which I had the intention as well as God has given me the capability to organize. Otherwise, it is very difficult to mobilize the people in a proper track way continuously. The problem with the society is now we are having some supportive factors and some opponents. What are all the opponents of the society? Simply there are four opponents in the society. Number one, there is no ability for the people to digest all of these things and concentrate. That ability has been totally lost from the society. And organizers like us, we are very inefficient or even if efficient, we are insufficient. Even if we are sufficient, our relation is intermittent. Even if we are meeting frequently, we are incompatible with each other in various grounds. So this thing should be certainly taken up. These things are the factors against us. And we are having lot of serious problems. There are two diversifiers in the society. Serious diversifier is poverty, unemployment, recession. Non-serious diversifiers are media, fashion show, cricket show. These things are also diversifying the society from concentrating on such productive issues. So what we are having is only four hopes. Number one is the era and time has come for us. As per our Shastra, this is the era, this is the proper time. So the conduciveness of the time and era and atmosphere is the first benefit. Second is Sanitya. We are having the footprints of great sages, seers, scholars and divine incarnates of the society. We are having still the fragrance of their might and great mercy on us. That is Sanitya. And the third thing is, very simple, we are having the Mula Vidya, whether we practice or not, we have all Shastras, Vedas and materials available for eternal relevance. And the fourth thing is very simple, we are having some special quality known as Purva Sesha. Even we have forgotten these principles before few decades or centuries or even millennia, still we are having a strong imprint of our fragrance and smell inside. Being an Indian, being born here, still we have the Purva Sesha, the residue of our soul which it has moved with this environment. If we just ignite it, immediately it will be made combustible. These four things are the factors which are consoling us. I wish that everybody should.
take care of this opportunity uh, to take this in the proper way of direction i wish that it will happen and it could happen and the final statement is leadership prayer what is known as leadership prayer if somebody thinks the thought that multiplies and intensifies i am praying now i want a good leader either i want to be a good leader there are three things i have already told to be a good leader to lead one's own self to lead others to lead others to be led by the great people and to lead oneself are the three dimensions of leadership self organize organizing others to be flexible to be organized by great people so now i am praying that i want to be a leader or i want to be a part of a leadership program or i want a leader for my society that is my thought if lot of people think like that it will multiply if it is thought lot of times that the time and intensity and gravity of thought that intensification will be consolidated this consolidation will penetrate into somebody it can penetrate into a person or penetrate or form as a person form inside the person form within the person form between the persons it may happen if we pray within ourselves it may be creating some group leadership abilities for all of us number 1 number 2 some leader may emerge among us amidst us number 3 it can create the desirable model of leaders who will come for the future and save god all of us number 4 already existing and born person if he is a leader somewhere else he will be more nourished yesterday i delivered a lecture on freedom struggle few people are known in the freedom struggle stand and 20 people are very much predominantly players they could succeed only because not of their greatness and commitment lakhs of people craved called and cried and they sacrificed their lives those people they have been good receptacles of the collective consolidated thought container or the thought uh, what we call thought synergy of millions of people they have been able to be good receptacles due to which those thought those thoughts that have penetrated inside them those thoughts have potentialized themselves by which they have emerged as successful and qualified leaders likewise let us all pray with our thoughts we should multiply and intensify consolidate and penetrate into any one of us or any one between us or anybody who is born or yet to be born let there be a creator and let that be a modifier let that be a designer of a new society which is nothing but a model of peace harmony and prosperity which has no other name synonymous with indian model narayana